here with the screenwriter, Pulitzer Prize winning author, Robert Schenken. Um, Mr. Schenken, I heard that you worked 10 years on this script. That's a long time. What, what was it about this story that made you want to stick with it for a length of time like that? You know, you're, you're fortunate uh, in my business if you, if you can have a, a story like this come your way. And by that, I mean one that is not only inherently theatrical and wildly cinematic and very, very moving, but I also think a story that really means something, a story that can really speak in a kind of profound way to serious contemporary issues. And, and that was the case with this story. You know, people would ask me about what I was doing, and I would tell them Desmond Doss's story. And I would weep every time I told it. And every time I told it, People at the end of it, they would like, that's a true story? And that's the amazing thing. If you wrote this as fiction, nobody would believe it. Net TV. There you go. What are you snagging uh, people? Are you Fisher of Men? What we are, are with the, the, the TV of the Diocese of Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, response to this film has been tremendous. I saw yeah. it. It's a fantastic film. Oh. Now, you've been developing a lot of interesting projects over the last 10 years. You've acted uh -huh. in a lot of really interesting uh, films. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is the first film you've directed in 10 years. What was it about this story that said, I have to direct this story? Well, it's a really compelling story. And the themes and what it's saying, I thought, were really inspiring. I mean, you know, you read through a script, if you're sort of crying on the script with salty tears, you know, messing up the pages and sort of smudging the ink, that's good, you know? I think that uh, it elicited uh, a, a, a good deal of emotion from me. So I wanted to tell the story. It's a story worth telling. And if you're going to direct something, you're going to be involved in it for 18 months to two years. You don't want to be on a, like, a stinker. You want to make sure it's a story worth telling. And that it, it, has, it should do three things. If you're going to spend that much time, it should entertain people, firstly. It should educate, if possible. And, and you know, thirdly, and, and, and probably the most important, it needs to elevate them. So it needs to get into another realm. I mean, inspiration, spirituality, whatever it, you know. And this film certainly could check off all those three boxes. Well, I hope so, yeah. Um, now, a lot of people have compared this film to, like, uh, Saving Private Ryan and the scope of it. But this really isn't your typical war film. In fact, you've said on many occasions, it's not a war story. It's a no. love story. Yeah, it's a love Can story. you talk a little bit about what you mean by that? Well, sure, because, I mean, you have the trappings of war. You have a situation where men go to war. And, it, you know, it's a just war. Um, but this man goes into war uh, without a weapon. He's armed with only his faith, and he goes into the epicenter of hell on earth, an experience that reduces most men to the level of animals. And he explores and exercises higher aspects of, of his virtues, I mean, which is uh, really uh, the ultimate thing is he's putting his life on the line for his brothers. Now, now this film, you know, you bring up the faith component. In yeah. many movies, that deal with characters of faith. Sometimes they'll mute the faith component. This one, you put it front and center. Why was that so important to keep the integrity of that for this character? Well, I think it, it was so integral to uh, who Desmond was. I mean, it really, you couldn't, you can't tell that story without it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was uh, persecuted for his beliefs in the army. They tried to get him out of the force. They thought he was some kind of coward. And uh, he maintained, you know, if he was reading his Bible, they'd throw boots at him and stuff. And it was, it was, um, the guy was uh, persecuted. And it, worse than what we show you in the film. Yeah, it went on for a couple of years. And they had doubts about him, and they, they didn't know what to make of this guy. But, uh, you know, the, the, the really inspiring aspect of that is in the worst place on earth when, you know, a guy without a weapon comes in, and he's actually saving the people who persecuted him. And this happened. You know? In one interview that I, I heard, uh, you said that, you know, the stereotype in Hollywood is the the reluctant, the man who's reluctant to use violence, who in the third act picks up the gun. Yeah. Here, Desmond Doss doesn't pick up the gun. And you said that you thought it was important to, to at least try to introduce an alternate image of masculinity. Uh, yes. Can you talk about why you think that's so important? I do, I do. Um, you know, not to, not to mention any names, but we are currently on bombarded with a certain aspect of masculine leadership, which is about dominance, casual cruelty, and self-interest. Desmond Doss is the antithesis of that. I think Desmond Doss truly embodies the Christian ethos of compassion, subservience to a greater cause, and self-sacrifice. And I think that's a really important model of masculinity to put out there right now. Thank you.